as uh, Brahma Chalani has been saying, that you're concentrating on the wrong enemy. Putin is not an enemy. He doesn't have the power. His economy is weak. Militarily, his budget is nothing much. He doesn't have the power. The main enemy is China, which you're ignoring because you're concentrating on Putin only because you want to show a victory somewhere and yeah. possibly regain the, uh, as far as uh, Biden is concerned, regain the local water base. Hello, very good evening and namaste. Um, welcome back to Chitta Media. I'm your host, Sharan Sethi. Today, we are joined by Major General Harsha Kakkar for a conversation on the ongoing uh, crisis in Ukraine. Uh, General Kakkar, thank you so much, sir. First of all, namaste and welcome back. My pleasure. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, before we go on to discuss the ongoing uh, crisis in Ukraine, uh, something very peculiar happened last night as far as India and Afghanistan is concerned. Now, the Taliban has its plans to raise a grand army for Afghanistan. Now, the details of what the composition of that army is going to be is not known yet. Uh, but also another controversy that was created was when it named one of its newest units as the Panipat unit, right? So is is there a symbolism behind uh, this particular move, sir? I don't think there's a symbolism towards the move. They, I mean, they have no uh, sort of, in fact, for them now, as I have always been saying that they would now seek better relations with India. This is not symbolism, it's naming it after a historical figure, basically, uh, who uh, fought in the Battle of Panipat. And it is nothing to do, per se, with India. It's possibly a means of conveying to Pakistan, which then was a part of India. So that could possibly be. It's nothing otherwise to do with it. The reason being that for them, they know that Pakistan can do nothing for them, can neither support them nor can represent them in global matters. The way, I mean, when India promised them 50,000 tons of wheat, which we've begun delivering, the delay has been because of Pakistan, not on account of India. Imran made the same comment. What happened to his 50 tons? They seem to have vanished into the Arabian Sea or possibly uh, flown down uh, into the sea or into the Indus or vanished somewhere because there's no mention after that. Right. But the fact is that they also realize that if they need to get support from the globe, uh, ties with India are far more important than ties with Pakistan. Pakistan can do nothing. The Indian budget has got 200 uh, crores, which have been earmarked for Afghanistan development. It can always go up in case uh, India-Afghanistan ties are good. And this 200 crores will only get invested, provided Afghanistan is in touch with India. Right. The, I mean, it's actually a carrot that you're hanging. So they're aware of it even before. So let's see how it goes. But uh, I don't think it is any link per se to try and, you know, hit back in India. There's nothing on that. Okay, they can't afford to do that and upset India, yeah. what you're trying to say. Uh, so before I ask you a few more questions on major global events, I, I think we need to address the Ukraine crisis. Because as we speak, President Putin has ordered uh, troops to be moved into uh, certain areas. And the Russian parliament has actually recognized uh, the Donbass republics. What is there a historical context to this? Because all of a sudden, Russia is emboldened and even China is somehow um, softly supporting this move of Russia. Uh, so what, uh, you know, I'm just curious about the timing of all this. See, you got to look at it that uh, when the erstwhile USSR broke up, uh, and as Putin said, to a large extent, historically, uh, Ukraine and Russia have been together. Crimea was never a part of Ukraine. It was made a part of Ukraine uh, during the USSR regime because they never expected the USSR to disintegrate the way it did. So were these two breakaway provinces. It was basically for administrative control. Even today, 17.3% of the Ukrainian population is Russian. So there is, and that's a fairly reasonable amount, of a reasonable population. Russia's defense industries, including uh, the ones from where we carry out import of our parts, uh, that is the aircraft industry, which is the EN uh, series of aircraft or the EN-32s, 
as also uh, the gas turbine uh, equipment for ships plus a lot more are based in Ukraine. So it was in, essentially in that form. Now the problem that came up was when Russia took back Crimea from Ukraine. Uh, people say that well, once it went to Ukraine, it became a part of Ukraine. But the but the Crimean population was largely not Ukrainian. So when they took it back, sanctions were imposed. Things started going off. But then the problem started with Ukraine tending to move, especially after the Crimea incident in 2014 tending to move towards uh, NATO, now, which implied that NATO coming on Russian doorsteps. Russia always had banked on these satellite countries as being a buffer between Russia and NATO or the European powers. But with that buffer having vanished and these and uh, weapon systems being deployed right on its borders, the reaction time of under five minutes for its capital uh, puts it at grave security risk. And then uh, it's a battle for Central Europe. Uh, Russia wants to project its power in Central Europe. Uh, the Western European powers, as also the US, do not want that to happen. So this is a battle that's going on. And the decision yesterday to recognize these two breakaway provinces yeah. and Putin moving his forces into the breakaway provinces which have actually broken away because of uh, Russian support. Right. That's the reason why they've broken away, why they've created that environment. So by moving the forces in, its posturing has increased. The US believes it's going to attack, which I don't know whether it's logical even for Putin to try and take over Ukraine, because he's going to face an insurgency, which is going to continue all through. Yeah. He's going to face uh, sanctions, which is going to impact him in the long term. Europe, in time, will settle down with the disadvantages of not getting Russian gas and having to bear uh, supplies from the US, which are far more costly, or from other sources. But the fact is, while they would be able to manage it and settle in, it's Russia that is going to be impacted. Plus, managing a country like Ukraine is not going to be easy. So it's doubtful he's going to go in, but the threat, but the fact that he's gone into these two breakaway provinces mm -hmm. is a threat enough for the for the rest of the world or the Western world to start reacting as to whether they need to get down to serious talks to try and cater to some of the fears that Russia has in the long term. Right. Interestingly, what is also being asked is, uh, especially after the... Um, you know, exit from Afghanistan, can the United States and President Biden really afford another major international crisis is what is also being discussed? See, uh, Biden is nowhere going to get into the Ukraine crisis. He has said, we're not going to deploy troops, we're not going to get into action. But yes, in case you do something, then we're going to place sanctions and then make it the worst possible sanctions. The Simultaneously, Boris Johnson has said that if you do nothing here, you go to embolden China. Because China is going to take the fact that, that the West is not going to interfere militarily. So Taiwan comes under threat. He used those words about three, not even about two, three days ago. Yeah. So the question is, what the West will do is strengthen Eastern European nations, Poland and Romania, which are part of NATO. Enhanced deployment there, which will then further aggravate uh, Putin. So things are going to move further west. But the fact is, as uh, Ramachalani has been saying, that you're concentrating on the wrong enemy. Putin is not an enemy. He doesn't have the power. His economy is weak. Militarily, his budget is nothing much. He doesn't have the power. The main enemy is China, which you're ignoring because you're concentrating on Putin only because you want to show a victory somewhere and yeah. possibly regain the, uh, as far as uh, Biden is concerned, regain the local water base. Right. This has been a classic strategy uh, before the elections in America. Uh, but let me also put it this way. If this will embolden China towards its, uh, you know, expansionist uh, regime that it has continued, won't that, well, shouldn't that be a concern for India as well? Because India seems to have taken a neutral stance uh, as usual, especially with the Ukraine crisis. See, India's stance is neutral as far as the Ukraine crisis is concerned. That's because uh, 
we are strategic partners with both russia and the us and we hoping that there is that it doesn't go you know further downhill from where it is and we do want to add on to because even with ukraine india has a good relationship ukraine is up, is upgrading all our an32 fleet which is about 100 aircraft uh, we're buying gas turbine engines from them for our naval vessels uh, there are a lot of other defense deals in fact in the last year as a year before last during the def expo i think there were 100 million dollars deals signed between the ukrainian companies and the indian companies or was it last year in the aero uh, india exhibition or something the fact is that we've got relations there our concern as far as china is concerned we are prepared right the confidence that jay shankar has displayed in the recent week past one or two weeks whether it was the quad summit and now in the uh, european ministerial meet yeah he has displayed the confidence and taken china on straight bash on uh, right. diplomatically and in public uh, aspects which he wouldn't have done in the previous uh, years but that is the sort of confidence that the government has that it's able to handle any of chinese whether it's hybrid warfare attempts or whatever but that is there so that's a changing environment this is definitely a renewed approach especially because the mea was not given that much of a weightage um in the previous years as, as much as it is being given right now especially because of dr jay shankar and i i watched the whole speech and uh, there were certain uh, certain banters also with the host that happened uh, friendly ones and uh, interestingly you know this this accusation uh, much more political than strategic uh, that the western media is very biased against us and i think he took that spot on and he said no, no, he coined the phrase liberal to, fundamentalism which i found no, it to be very interesting no you you need to read what is published today in the statesman when i compare the farmers agitation uh, with the truckers agitation yeah when i talk about the way the world looks at india and canada and the way the two nations handled it it's published in the states one today okay yeah, yeah i mean even uh, justin trudeau you know amid all the ongoing uh, uh, crisis in canada he is issuing a statement uh, con- you know saying that the canadians are concerned about uh, severe human rights violations in ukraine uh, he's only concerned about human rights violations elsewhere what about human rights violations he talks about peaceful protest but what about peaceful protest in canada there you apply an emergency act and you get i would be crossing again yeah <laughs> um so funnily enough you know while the, all of this is going on and uh, diplomatically every country is uh, supposed to issue a statement the kenyans issued a very very interesting statement i don't know if you've come across this so they basically said that you know yeah we have a lot of border issues around the world that's probably because colonial powers like uh, like britain drew up a very messed up boundaries and because of which we have we've been having a lot of fights don't you realize this so it's like somebody really frustrated at the foreign office in kenya has been writing this letter and it it was almost very true and it became viral on twitter you know so um this so this has also raised a lot of questions about the credibility i mean which is already being raised in several years now about the united nations to be able to resolve any major conflict so should we look at uh, creating different institutions globally that could perhaps uh, replace or at least overhaul the united nations and give it more powers the any organization that is created only functions depend depending on how much its members are willing to accept its directions especially an international organization because there is no common global rule as in a nation today if the supreme court passes an order it is to be implemented because it is an indian supreme court and under the indian constitution as far as the globe is concerned there is nothing like a global constitution there is nothing like global rules the amount a nation is willing to follow directions from a global organization you continue with the un you create new ones the situation is going to remain the same if the were if the nations of the world are unwilling to accept the directions of the un there's nothing that the un can do you've seen that in the israel case you're seeing that in terms of whether it's the fatf gray list or the black list what happens to the nations does anything stop 
right even here especially with uh, the power of a veto how much are you going to impose hmm. on russia on ukraine on the us to pull back i mean after all today the views are two different views the us feels that it cannot give it cannot agree to russian conditions russia feels i need to be concerned about my security for the future yeah okay now who is right who is wrong which is the body to decide and who is going to accept the verdict of the body right so, so that is where the problem is so no matter what you do the story will remain the same in that case in a changing security environment especially one that is going to be dominated by china or at least to a certain extent is dominated by china and india is still trying to catch up to that uh, rise of china so how will we see institutions evolve per se and how can we uh, retain the rule based order uh, that the united states has been uh, uh, advocating for see the rule based order basically implies which simply implies that you cannot go and change boundaries you cannot go and take over nations india has been sticking to it and india is sticking to it here india is not saying that russia is the aggressor because russia has not yet commenced the aggression it is threatening aggression so we are not criticizing anyone we are not saying anything there the rule based order collapses the moment a nation walks in or breaks what should have been a global common right the world says crimea was a part of ukraine historically russia says it is not a part of ukraine so it's always going to be a double sided sword so what you are basically looking at is to back the principle of not changing boundaries right. back to the principle of not you know a breaking orders a uh, creating an environment which can be followed by other nations elsewhere now if russia does something here and the world sits quiet tomorrow china grabs the islands in the south china sea and expects the world to sit quiet is that going to be acceptable so that is where the problem is coming in right so before we wrap up uh, you, you know in nepal especially after the communists came to power uh, it has been moving in the direction of the chinese they're getting very close to china and this has been a major um, uh, you know neighbor neighborhood policy uh, setback for india and india has been trying different approaches but yesterday there were severe protests outside the nepalese parliament especially because the us um, has granted a certain amount of aid to nepal so have the communists uh, finally realized um, the 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 disadvantages of uh, the chinese economic prowess or its policies towards certain countries see uh, china initially always appears good it's only subsequently that you realize nepal is also released it puts Yeah. Unofficially, though, of Chinese construction of of uh, you know buildings and areas yeah. in their uh, territory. Plus, what China promises, it never fulfills. The road link or the seaport that China offered Nepal, and the number of vehicles that have taken the route to reach, has been vastly different between promises and implementation. Nepalese vehicles are blocked for weeks on end on the border if not permitted to enter China on some pretext or the other. On the other side, as far as India is concerned, they're getting a free run. The Chinese aid is being promised; nothing much flows in. But if it comes, whatever comes in comes in with riders. Right. So the realization that you may follow, I mean, you may be on a communist line with them because of the uh, because of the ideology, but banking on them to help you out economically or to help boost the people, the sort of uh, local public is unlikely. Yeah. Now Even that now. realization starts seeping in when you see what is happening on ground between the promises being made. Right. we are seeing the changes similarly with sri lanka and uh, you know even maldives for that matter so finally um, do you think that apart from pakistan in the neighborhood there is a slight uh, momentum of change perhaps towards india see there, there there is a momentum of change but then again there are hiccups if you look at maldives there are again protests that are taking off for india out 
But the fact is that it's only India which has helped them out. China has sucked them dry. When the current government took over power, they didn't even know how much they owed China. It was only the Chinese ambassador who gave the figures. The government did not know how much they owed China. Now, Sri Lanka today doesn't have money. It's just got six days stock of oil. Yeah. So it needs immediate support for to purchase oil. Who's going to give it the support? It's possibly going to be India. Right. Right. So, I mean, after all, you, you know, that realization that when we are in a jam, there's only one nation to support us. That realization comes in. China is only going to suck you dry. It's going to give you money for initial. Today, you get the money, you party, you celebrate, you pocket it, and that's it. But a year later, when you got to repay, what do you do? Right. The world is waking up to that hangover, perhaps. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Total pleasure is mine. Thank you. Take care. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit CITTI.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.